Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Today we cover the names of Al Khaliq, Al Bari, and Al Musawwir, uh, names that have the connotations of creation, of innovation, and of fashioning. Uh, and just as a reminder, the texts that we use to uh, help guide our conversation and guide the lessons and wisdoms that we have uh, is reflecting on the names of Allah by Jinan Yusuf. Uh, so inshallah, the, how uh, we uh, glean over these 99 names and uh, go through them in order uh, comes from that book, inshallah. So just to begin, um, beginning with these uh, this aspect of signs, uh, many of us who spend time in nature or whether we're walking around or uh, you know, meditating or just being in the general outdoors, if we just have an affinity for going camping or just like to spend some time outside uh, of our workspace, outside of the house, uh, or if we just like to just gaze uh, at the expanse of starry nights um, or the, the, the sky that's there, or, uh, watching birds and all these different ways of just connecting with nature, we can speak to the awe that we feel seeing the natural world and the beauty of nature. And the Quran tells us that all of this, the creation of all of this, the heavens, the earth, the night, the day, the nature, um, the natural world, all of it is a sign for those of us who reflect, for those of us who contemplate, and for those of us who think uh, that these are all signs. And what's the purpose of a sign? The purpose of a sign is to lead us somewhere or to give us a help uh, us arrive to a conclusion. Uh, and as such, uh, everything in this universe, in this created world, is a sign. It's something that should lead us to Allah. It's something that should lead us to the conclusion that Allah is the one who created all this, and it's some, something that should eventually lead us back to Allah. Um, Allah, who is Al Khaliq, the creator, the producer, Al Bari, and the fashioner, Al Musawwir, names that may have similar con connotations, but have beautiful nuances reflective of the very tapestry of creation itself. And so to begin, Al Khaliq is the creator. Uh, and it's a general name, uh, oftentimes mentioned in the Quran, both as a noun, as a verb. Uh, it's referring, it refers uh, to creation. The references to creation is over 200 with reference to human beings. Uh, specifically, Allah mentions how uh, Allah had created us over 80 times. Um, and when we say that Allah is Al Khaliq, we are referring to this uh, determining, this determining that something is brought from non existence into existence. This is the essence of the name, is to create uh, from something uh, out of nothing. Um, and so uh, Allah determines what to bring into existence. As Allah says in the Quran, He has created each thing and determined it with a precise determination. Um, other understandings of this name uh, often attach meanings of invention and innovation and the one who determines what is brought into existence without any help or guide, a general creation of sorts. Al-Bari, uh, the next step in the sequence here, Al-Bari is the one who produces. It's more specific and it refers to the manifesting or to the bringing of what has been determined into existence. And so you think of uh, producing, um, you know, something that has been determined to be uh, to be existing from non-existence, and now Al Bari is the one that the producer of this, the one that brings that um, into uh, literal existence. Um, Al Musawir is the fashioner, the one who specifies the particular, the unique form or the shape of what has been created and what has been produced. As the Quran says, it is He who shapes you all in the womb as he pleases, but uh, no God uh, is, uh, there's no God but Allah, mighty and wise. And, you know, just, just to, what we can glean from this is that whoever we are, whatever ability we may have, um, whatever look we have, whatever background we have, whatever difference we have, uh, this world will often tell us that, uh, you know, certain features are lesser, certain features are better, certain colors of skin are better, certain colors of skin are lesser. Uh, we get these connotations and, uh, and, and, you know, very gross misconceptions from the world around us. However, uh, within uh, Allah's universe, within that which is under 
uh, and lifted up by Allah, uh, each of us in our different differences uh, are absolutely the same as a as the teeth of a comb. We, we, we are honored by our differences, by our abilities and uh, the diversity that we bring to the table, uh, not to be ashamed by any of it or to be seen as any less because of that which we don't have. Um, and so each of us was created in our respect and wisdom. Uh, as Allah says that Allah is Al-Aziz Al-Hakim at the end of this work, that it is he who shapes you in the womb as he pleases and that Allah is Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, that this is not done just um, without any uh, any thought or any wisdom, this is with a, a divine wisdom, though we might not know it, and we might have trouble understanding that wisdom, given where we live and given um, how we've come into being in, in society at the moment. And so through these names, Allah calls us to reflect on the different aspects and stages of creation, that we created humans from an essence of clay, the Quran says. We created humans from an essence of clay, then we placed them as a drop of fluid in a safe place. We then made that drop into a clinging form. And then that form became a lump of flesh. That lump of flesh became uh, into bones. Those bones were then clothed with flesh and then uh, later made that into different forms. And so this image of development, this image of gradual development can give us much to think about and reflect about with respect to how we as humans were not just you know, ordained to be, you know, that kun fayakun, that we were ordained to be, but what goes on beyond that? What's what's in that uh, that command? What's in that creation itself that we were not only created, we were produced, we were fashioned. And uh, we oftentimes want to reflect on how this uh, reflects to our relationship with Allah. Uh, a lot of times when we just call Allah, as we mentioned in our first session, as our Rabb, um, that Allah is our Lord. Sometimes we just create that that uh, power differential that's there, and just that 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 existing um, difference that is there between master and servant. But we sometimes erase the compassion that is there. We sometimes take away um, this this rich relationship that is there. That Allah did not just you know tell us to be and then we were and then Allah has left us alone without any concern but Allah has uniquely fashioned who we are each of us who we are where we are um, not only fashioned but ordained not only ordained but then brought into shape given abilities given a dose of wisdom given these at uh, attributes in a sense uh, you know created from this rich tapestry and and given uh, this nurturing um, you know, not just in this aspect of, hey, like, you know, we've commanded and now this creation is there, but to go through this process, as we've just mentioned, that's lifted up in the Quran, the process of creation of gradually, gradually forming where uh, humans come from a, you know, just a very a microcosm um, to uh, their, their current form. And so just to think about that, the care that is required for that, the, the process that is required and how Allah has invested uh, in that process uh, rather than just automating it in the sense that Allah has involved uh, deeply in that process. And so when we reflect on these names, when we reflect on the names of Allah in general, as we've been doing, uh, and their manifestation in our lives, it helps us to uh, make these connections to Allah a lot more apparent, to help us see Allah where we previously didn't see Allah, um, and to fill in those gaps because we're there uh, between all of these things, between uh, the letters uh, that are on my page here between uh, the whites uh, of the the black of the letters between the letters themselves the divine exists in in this aspect and so for us in our literal creation and then in in the in-betweens uh, of the processes and in that which we don't see the divine pervades in there and, and we need to when we reflect on this we're able to see how Allah is deeply involved in our world deeply involved in our own lives and not just uh, left us to our own devices uh, and so reflection itself when we reflect on this when we think about these names uh, it's an act of worship it's a path to Allah uh, Hassan al-Basri uh, the Tarbi, the Sayyid the Tarbi, um, uh, had, had, had related a very famous tradition that uh, said that an hour's con contemplation is better than a year of voluntary night prayer. A lot of folks may just see this as, oh, like, you just go sit in nature and now that'll be better than a year of voluntary uh, night prayer or qiyam. Um, what, what this means is an hour's contemplation. When you really sit, when you really reflect, we see what the Quran says uh, at the beginning when we uh, stated that uh, the um, heavens and the earth, the creation of all this, 
Um, you know, all of these are a sign for those who reflect. So when you deeply reflect, when you connect, not just in a sense of just meditate in nature, but you draw those connections to the divine, to the one who originated this. When you find a law in these reflections, when these reflections are done for Allah, the benefit of it, uh, as Hassan al-Basri uh, states, um, is uh, equivalent to that or better than that of a year of just voluntary prayer. So not underestimating the aspects of reflection, especially in a time uh, and world where we don't get to do much of that. We're often confined to these screens. We're often confined to our routines and workplaces. So just to get an hour's worth uh, might seem like a mountainous task to have, but just to see the benefit that some of our pious predecessors attach to just detaching from this world for a little bit uh, and to just spend that time uh, in reflection of the one who took the time to create you. And so how do we, in conclusion, how do we live with this name? We want to live with this name or these names by reflecting on this world, by taking time out from our day and from the busyness to do so. Just uh, reflect upon this world, reflect upon yourself, reflect upon the creation, uh, anything that goes about. Um, don't just look at it as something that's a given or something that's guaranteed or something that's uh, just a matter of fact that's there. Look at it um, from this lens of creation. Look at it from this lens of not just creation, but production, um, from fashioning to shaping. Um, think about how Allah has uh, put effort into each and every one of these things, put wisdom and, and, and put uh, all of these things to, to come into being. Reflect not just on the awe or the beauty of nature, um, but also draw those connections to Allah and draw the connections to the blessings of Allah that have been bestowed upon you, that we're in this planet that uh, is able to sustain human life and, um, you know, it, it, at an age old uh, kind of, uh, you know, research right now is just to try and find other planets that are habitable and, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's finding a needle in a haystack, essentially, you know, so, so just to see how unique our space is, but then reflecting on Allah's blessing for us as humans, but also in the world around us, um, not to abuse the creation. Remember, you were created by the creator. You were fashioned, you were produced by the producer and the fashioner. Um, and, and the other creation that is around you was also done so as well. So be mindful of that which we do to the world around us. Worship Allah, reflect on uh, Allah's wisdom and see the wisdom in the creation. Think about it when you reflect on it, um, connect not just to Allah, but connect to Allah's wisdom, that there is uh, wisdom in this as well. Uh, and then lastly, know that you're special. This might seem, um, you know, uh, just as a, a kind of, you know, gotcha in a sense, but like uh, know that you are special. You're created individually. You're created with purpose and purposefully. Uh, and reflect on your purpose. Reflect on your relationship with Allah. When Allah says that we have made humans um, from an essence of clay and placed them as a drop of fluid uh, in a safe place and created that drop into a clinging form and a lump form into a lump, lump of flesh, into bones, and, and so on and so forth, think of that in yourself. Imagine yourself because that is you. That is you um, and your creation being described. So when you see uh, the Quran, when you see revelation, when you see Allah speak about the creation of humans, the creation of humanity, see yourself in that because you are uh, in that 100% uh, and then you are a part of that uh, as a collective as well. So know that Allah took the time to fashion you, to create you, to think about you and to bring you into existence and to uh, bring you to the form that you are today. Uh, and know that uh, Allah has that concern for you individually, as well as for all those who are around you. Uh, and so uh, as Allah took the time for you and to bring you into existence, bring you into creation, take some of that time for Allah uh, and, and acknowledging that Allah's presence is in your life and that you have that connection with Allah. Uh, above all, these names should let us know that we have a deep, intimate connection with Allah. We might not have realized it, prior, but we do have that connection that's inherently built into our DNA. Uh, and our purpose, inshallah, is to see that we're not just left to our own devices, that we're created with purpose. And part of that purpose is to uh, rediscover and reconnect with Allah. So may Allah enable us to be amongst those who uh, not just reflect on the world around us, but are able to reconnect through the world, through all that is around us uh, to Allah. Uh, through the creation, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.